Can you all hear me? Yes. I know nobody will pay attention to me, just can you hear me? Yes. Good. Um, Bill Powers, would you come up for just a minute? My name is Kenny Jastrow, and I'm going to serve as MC um, this evening and welcome the Subiendo of the DFA dinner. And um, we'll have a lot to say about things, and you're going to hear a remarkable from a remarkable person, Eduardo Repetto, who is the co-CEO of uh, DFA, Dimensional Fund Advisors. But before we begin, I thought it would be appropriate to ask the president of the University of Texas, Bill Powers, who is one of America's truly great academic leaders, and I mean that. He, he leads this university, and this university is among the very best, headed to being the best. So uh, I thought it would be really appropriate for you to hear from uh, what is America's greatest president of a, of a major university, Bill Powers. <clears throat> Well, thank you, Kenny, and, and let me thank you and David and everyone else involved in Subiendo. Uh, Ronnie, just the whole group, and I'm leaving people out, but this doesn't just happen overnight. It happens because of vision uh, and hard work and financial support uh, by some very, very special people. So Kenny and David and Ronnie and, and everybody involved in, uh, in Subiendo, let me just give you... Uh, my thanks, and I think we ought to give them a round of applause for making this possible. I am so excited about this program. This is our third year. It is a great group of y'all who are sitting in these seats. Uh, you are extremely talented, working hard, thinking about your future. Um, we could not be more excited about having all of you here to go through this Subiendo uh, experience. I've gotten to chat with a number of you. It is, uh, I'll say, Kenny, a really impressive mm -hmm. group of young people. <clears throat> I wake up uh, you know, in the middle of the night and fret about a lot of things about the future of you know, the world. And then I come to something like this and, and I think, you know, I have great confidence in the future of the world. You all, you all are the future and uh, it, it's a very bright future indeed. I'll just make one other quick comment uh, about the experience you're going through. Uh, the very first Subiendo uh, that I think David met in this room as well, <clears throat> um, and uh, it was a, a great program, a little smaller than this. It was you know, uh, just getting going, but a great group of young people. And about four months after it ended, I was in an event where uh, it was a Hispanic uh, awards dinner. And one of the uh, young students who had been in the previous summer's Subiendo, the very first one, came to the event and came up and introduced herself. Remember, you were there, Kenny. And she said, I came to this because I just wanted to tell you she really got the wrong people. It should have been Ronnie and the staff and the mentors, but she didn't know where they were. But, but she came up and said, I just wanted to tell you, Subiendo changed my life. And that was the biggest reward any of the people who are uh, organizing this could have. <clears throat> but I hope you all will see that also. This is a tremendous opportunity and program that really can uh, be a foundation to go on and do the, the, the terrific things uh, that you'll out, be out there doing. So Kenny and uh, everyone here, I just want to say it is an honor and a, and a privilege and fun to be able to be among all of you tonight and see that the future of our uh, community and state and country and world uh, is very bright indeed. So thank you very much. You know, the president has lots of opportunities to do things, and the fact that he takes time to come to the Subiendo dinner here at DFA uh, is a true testimony and, and 
and a real symbol of how important Subiendo is to this state. So, Bill, thank you for your participation and for being here. Uh, before we get on, uh, get on with the program, I would like to recognize a past Subiendo attendee who is here tonight. Uh, Stephen, will you raise your hand? Uh, Stephen actually uh, was on the wait staff here in a, uh, tonight, and he is headed to the University of Texas, having come to Subiendo the second year, and he's going to major in fine arts. And we want to recognize him and thank him. It's a great testimony. <laughs> Uh, Subiendo, uh, which is all about rising and leadership and going forwards in this state, um, grew out of an idea that developed when you start thinking about the future of this state in the years 2020 and 2030 and 2040 and beyond. It became obvious to a few of us that uh, maybe we needed to really focus on a new group of leaders for this state. Now, certainly the state of Texas has... Uh, uh, Boy State and Girl State, which is an important and really long-term, very effective uh, program, but it's all about politics. This is about leadership, and what we want you to do from Subiendo is two things. One, to believe that you can be a leader, and two, that you want to be a leader. So it's aspirational as well as motivational. What we do here is expose you to issues. We ask you to talk about issues. We ask you to think about things. What we don't do is tell you what to think. That's your job to come up with answers to ideas. And I heard today from Leticia and from Ronnie that the presentations at the Capitol today were absolutely outstanding. And I want to congratulate all of y'all. That's a tough crowd to go down there and uh, present ideas and discuss and take questions, so congratulations. Uh, you have uh, really surpassed all expectations about uh, how focused you are and this whole issue of leadership. So as you leave here, this is all about believing you can and believing that you will be leaders in this state. And I want to tell you, under you must know that we are counting on you. You are the future of this state and so we're very happy to have this class of Subiendo. Also, when you leave Subiendo, we want you to stay in touch with us. Your contact with future Subiendo attendees, your contact with previous Subiendo attendees creates a club sort of network and an environment. And we want to stay connected. So it's your job to stay connected with us. Also, I probably have about 20 business cards in my pocket. Anybody have not given me a business card, you should, because I'll write you a letter. And if you haven't given a, let, a business card to everybody that's not in Subiendo, you should. And the reason is so they know who you are, they put you on, your, on their Rolodex, and you now have a new contact. So if you haven't given your card out to everybody in this room, including your Subiendo friends, <laughs> give them one so that people know who you are and can stay connected with you. All right, this idea grew out, uh, as I said, talking about leadership. And uh, the first person I went to was David Booth. And together, he and I have sort of developed this concept, brought it to the University of Texas. And uh, David, uh, thank you for all your participation in this. Uh, as, uh, as Bill said, it does take funding to make Subiendo a reality. And we have seven friends of Subiendo which basically are seven families that put up the money so that this is a free event to you. All your rooms are taken care of, your food's taken care of, your transportation's taken care of, and we want it that way. So I want to recognize the friends of Subiendo. First and foremost, it's David Booth and his wife Suzanne. Suzanne's not here, but Ch where's Chandler here? Where's Chandler? There he is. This, this is David's son Chandler, but David and Chandler Booth. Next are the University of Texas, uh, some of the very, very uh, best and long-term supporters of the University of Texas who really believe in this whole mission of leadership and the future of this state, both for, for every class of citizens. And that's Joe and Terry Long. Joe has just walked in the room. They are without a doubt. <laughs> Terry, Terry, stand up, please. There's Terry, there's Joe. Yeah.
They are some of the most generous people uh, that this university has ever known, and this university wouldn't be where it is without Joe and Terry, and they're a remarkable couple, so be sure you get to know them. They are, they are just wonderful, but they're, they're part of our friends. Next is Beverly and Will O'Hare. They're actually the seventh family that have joined us. Uh, Beverly is not here. Will, will you stand up? Will and Beverly O'Hare, and they've been... <laughs> They have been major contributors to the Macomb School of Business, and uh, Will actually lectures there, and he's had a very distinguished career. His wife, Beverly, has some physical issues, but she's doing well. But they are a fabulous couple and great supporters of this university and of you personally. All right, the next is uh, my wife, Susie, and me. Susie, if you'll stand up. Uh, we're part of the Subiendo Friends. <laughs> And finally, uh, I'd like to also mention as our friends, and you're going to hear from Eduardo, Eduardo Repetto and his wife, Carla uh, Figueroa. And Carla's not here, but Eduardo, if you'll raise your hand. He, he and Carla are friends of City End they are, they are a remarkable couple. And you're going to hear from Eduardo tonight. Uh, and, but they are part of our friends and a very important part. And if last year's presentation by Eduardo was anything, if this year's is like last year's, it's going to be stunning because it was fabulous last year. Not to put any pressure on you, Eduardo. <laughs> uh, two other couples that are not here are Gary and Sylvie Crum. I don't know if you ever heard of AIM Investment, which is a major fund down in Houston uh, that uh, Gary was co-founder of. He and his wife, Sylvie, are big supporters of the university, and they're a member of the Friends of Subiendo. And then another couple who have been very generous to the University of Texas and close friends of ours, uh, Barbara and Corby Robertsons. They're not here tonight. So anyway, seven friends of Subiendo. And uh, we, very much, we very much believe in this program and its benefit to Texas and to you personally. Um, now let me move on. I've, I've, we've introduced uh, Bill Powers. Um, Subiendo is in the business school. It's under Tom Gilligan. He and his wife, Christy, could not be here tonight. But we do have the director of Subiendo, Leticia, is here. Leticia, you all know Leticia and, and Vanessa, let me, who's the program director. If Vanessa, will you stand up too and let us recognize you and, and Leticia. They're great. Now, Subiendo also has an advisory council, and uh, we've got wonderful support on the advisory council. Um, if, if uh, Those on the advisory council, if you stand, and I want to recognize one p uh, person in particular, uh, the co-chair of, uh, of the advisory council are, are two, two women. One is Sarah Martinez-Tucker, who is not here, but is very instrumental in this program. And then, of course, Ronnie Stidvent, who is the first program director. And Ronnie's back there. Ronnie, would you raise your hand? Ronnie, would you like to make... <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, Ronnie, why don't you share a little bit what you told me today about the presentation. Just yell it out from there. I, I know that... <laughs> I was telling Kenny that this is definitely the best CBN though we've had in terms of... All right. This is the best CBN though are the quality of the presentations, the focus of the students, and, and I think a, a lot of the credit goes to Leticia and Vanessa and to all of you because I was just blown away by the quality of the presentation. It was an amazing job, and I can't wait to see what you all do next. That's great. Thank you. Ronnie worked in the beginning with uh, David and me and Bill Powers and um, and others involved with the University of Texas and uh, did a remarkable job. And now Leticia, uh, the baton's been handed to Leticia, and she and Vanessa have just done wonderful. So we are in good hands here. This program is really off and running and in good shape. I know there are speakers here. If, if anybody that's a speaker in Subiendo, just raise your hand. Let us recognize you. Thank you for, for speaking today. All right. Thank you all. Okay, enough of me. I'm getting tired of listening to myself, and I don't blame you. I'm tired, too. 
Uh, you're, you're sitting in one of the finest, if not the finest, suburban office building in the United States. This is the home of Dimensional Fund Advisors. Uh, David Booth uh, is the founder of DFA. It is one of the uh, largest and leading uh, money management firms in the world. Uh, David came out of Kansas uh, by way of the University of Chicago and uh, began DFA, and its success story has been remarkable. This building uh, is a real symbol of how important um, a home for employees to make people feel uh, very much uh, loved and very much part of the team. And this building was built uh, for the purpose of really recognizing employees and the great work of DFA. So uh, you sit here as the guest of Dimensional Fund Advisors, David Booth and Eduardo, our co-CEO, and I'd like to call on David now to come introduce uh, Eduardo and make any comments that he would like to say about DFA. David Booth. Is, is this mic on? Oh, okay, good. Well, thank you, Kenny. First off, let me uh, tell you who deserves more credit than anybody here, and that's Kenny. I mean, he's being very modest about shucks, we had this idea and uh, so forth. But uh, he's, if you're looking at an example of leadership, it's Kenny. You know, not only, you know, I chatted with him early on about the idea, but it was Kenny that executed on it and uh, made it come to life. So. I don't want to say a whole lot about uh, the firm, but um, if I were in your shoes, I think the thing I'd be interested in is I, I think that we're really living the American dream. When you sit here, you probably have a tendency to think that we were handed this kind of uh, opportunity, the building or whatever, or we grew up uh, with, uh, you know, with parents that had money or whatever. That's not the case. Uh, I uh, sat there when going my senior year and, you know, fortunately, uh, my hometown was where the University of Kansas was and that's the only reason I could afford to go to college. But from that, uh, you know, beginning, and that's, I echo uh, Kenny's words, uh, the idea here is to make sure that you all understand how important the education is and how important uh, and how much we're counting on you, you know, to uh, fulfill your end of the deal here. Um, but. Uh, from education was my way uh, of getting uh, into a career. Eventually we started the firm. Uh, our first office was my um, uh, apartment. <laughs> and uh, from that, at uh, 31 years later, you see uh, what we have. So um, I'm not taking credit for anything, but just saying, look, uh, the American dream is still alive. And uh, it's up to each of you to find uh, uh, find your own way in, 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 uh, in through life and figuring out uh, what's best for you. So enough of that. Let me, uh, it's my great pleasure to be able to introduce Eduardo. Eduardo, as you uh, will hear in a minute, uh, didn't grow up in the States. He uh, grew up in Argentina and his wife who grew up in Mexico makes fun of his accent, but uh, uh, Eduardo uh, came to, uh, to the States, got his master's degree at Brown, and a PhD in aeronautical engineering or, uh, at uh, Caltech. Um, and uh, was uh, actually you know, one, a rocket scientist or whatever, and uh, decided fortunately to switch careers about, uh, I mean, it was about 11 years now? Something like that. 14. 14? Yeah, that's oh. why I have white hair. <laughs> <laughs> 14, geez, that's great. And um, came in as entry level, uh, entry level job, and is now co CEO with me, um, and has just truly been uh, had a meteoric rise throughout, throughout the firm. And I think uh, what he has, the message he has for you, based on his experience, um, you'll find very rewarding. So, with that, uh, Eduardo, come in and give us a talk. This is not all me, so don't, don't, don't say it. I feel these things kind of embarrassing. Uh, so, D 
this is about you. And, and I think if you heard what Kenny and what David said, it's about you and you have the opportunity to make a difference in your life. And when you make a difference in your life, you're making a difference in the state, in your families, in the country, and maybe in the world. Why not? You have many people that have made that. And, but before speaking, I wanted to give you an example of someone that was here last year. And because of his own initiative, he is doing things in one year that are unbelievable. And, and Steve, come here. I, I, I need a microphone for him. He was a Subiendo guy last year. He wasn't in, in, in orange. I think you were in blue, but no, different. We were, we were, oh, we were you were in orange, OK. Yeah, orange. And so I, I, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And he was here in Subiendo. And so one year after, he He's going to tell us what he's going to be doing a year from now and during the summer. So why don't tell how you got to, to where you are trying to get? OK, uh, well, obviously, during the summer, I have a summer job here in Austin. I was born in Austin, and so I grew up here. And so this is my job. I was on the wait staff here um, for you guys. Uh, so after Subiendo last year, class of 2011, we all stayed in touch with each other. So just like Kenny said, the networking with everybody that you're meeting and everybody that you will continue to stay with, you actually do. Because all of us were going all over the place. There are a couple of us in uh, Chicago with the performing arts. A lot of us are at UT and all over Texas. So um, about me, I Subiendo was my push to push me over the edge to actually apply to UT because I was really excited. Obviously, I'm from Austin, so I, didn't, um, I wanted to get out of Austin. But after Subiendo, I got to see a different side of UT and a side that I really liked. So I applied to UT for the College of Fine Arts and Dance, and I need business, which is why I came to Subiendo in the first place, because I, I like the environment. And so I got accepted to the University of Texas at Austin, and I will be attending there next year as a college freshman. Woohoo! <laughs> clap for that, clap for that, clap for that. Um, and getting my business degree in the College of Fine Arts and business as well with the Business Foundations program. But if any of you are thinking about um, pursuing something other than Macombs, you know, if you can't really get in, but that is okay, try anyways. Um, look to the business. There is a president around here that yes, can help, but yes, I'm not sure telling you that. <laughs> you know. Um, so I'll be at UT next year. I was working this summer because I need to get more money for college and actually. I just applied and got accepted to the Young Ambassadors Program, which is sponsored by the Smithsonian Latino Center. Uh, I leave on Sunday to DC, Washington DC, where we have a week of training and it's for um, rising Latino leaders with an interest in the arts, uh, any arts, whether it be performing, visual, something like that. And so they take us out to DC. So someone gave to you with the plate and said, please take this, so how, how did it work? Uh, no, it's an, it's an open application, an open application, open to anyone, just, just like Subiendo. And if you've already gone to something like Subiendo, and I've been to a couple of uh, programs, but none of them were actually like Subiendo, because up to date, and I just told uh, Madeline this the other day at the luncheon, up to date, Subiendo was the best program that I had been to, and I'm telling you, I've been to a few out of states and things like this, but um, Subiendo was the best. We'll see if DC can top it, I don't know. But. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. So let's go over what we just heard. You're here because Kenny said, Kenny wanted to create a forum to create leaders. And you're here because you applied, and I'm pretty sure that the, the application process is, is kind of a pain, you know? Application processes and work is kind of a pain. It's better just to go and do something else. You cannot drink beers, but I can. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, just watch TV or whatever. But you decided to do this. And Stephen, what he decided is, look, I want to do different things. I want to go uh, and perform in the arts, get a business degree related to art. So he went to look for opportunities that enable him to achieve his goal. Nothing is given to you. You have to go and look for it. You can sit and think, well, maybe someone will come with a plate and a marvelous fellowship because I'm amazing. Well, no one will know that you're amazing if you don't raise your hand. So the whole idea of Subiendo was create leaders. And leaders are the ones that go and look for the opportunities. So the whole goal here is to show that you have to look for your opportunities. And when you look for opportunities, you are the one that is going to make a change. A change in your life first, for sure but also in the life of everyone around you. That can be uh, your family, 
that can be uh, your employees, for example, David, he has 650 people working in Dimensional worldwide in uh, eight different offices, soon to, soon to be 11. Changes in the, in the city, we have 400 employees in, in Austin that were not employees because we were not here before. So you can make changes that affect the life of many because you just take the initiative. And it's easier to take the initiative at this point of your life. It's easy also not to do it. But at this point in your life, you can take a lot of risks. You know, just go for your dreams. Just go and look what you are trying to find. Find a way to get it. There are always ways to get it. The state, the country gives you tons of opportunities to find ways to get what you want. And just get it. Just get it done. Like Nike says, Nike says just do it, just do it, <laughs> you know? Just do it, you know, when these guys run marathons or whatever they run, I cannot run anything, but <laughs> if these guys run marathon or anything, it's a lot of effort. Well, achieving your goals is going to be a lot of effort, but at the end of the day, it's going to be rewarded. It's going to reward it because you try hard and you find the opportunities and, and, and you just have a lot of persistence in what you are trying to do and sooner or later you succeed. And don't plan 20 years, because if you think that I ever planned to live in Texas, you're wrong. I didn't even know where Texas was. <laughs> eh, sorry, Kenny. I live in the hill country. Of course I didn't know where the hill country is. Yeah, I, 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 I still don't know where it starts. I think it starts in Westlake, but, uh, but I'm not sure. I, I, but just go and take the opportunities. See what you want to do, trust, try hard, find the path. And whenever you see, well, this is something that I didn't plan, but it's more interesting, just go and grab it. As long as you believe in yourself and you work hard, you will succeed. And one of the important things, I think, that Sovien, that, that this is encouraging education. And, and maybe I put too much effort in education. I mean, at the end of the day, PhD in aeronautics, you say, well, you need one of those. Well, you know, it's never, never too much. Yeah, maybe if you stop earlier, maybe you waste less time and do weird things like I was doing. But you know, education is good. And so from here, you're in high school, just go to university, get your education. It's something that is worth a lot of money. It's worth a lot of satisfaction. It's a pain, let's be clear, studying for a final. <laughs> analysis, who likes this analysis thing? But at the end of the day, you will use it. You may not use what you see in the class, but the logic or, or the way of thinking or something, you will use it sometime in your life, and it's going to make a difference that is going to be rewarding. This is not about me, so I don't want to be speaking the whole time. So this is about you guys. So we have to be in interactive. If you're leaders, just raise your hand and ask questions. If, if not, we just go and have dinner. So, uh, so um, I don't know if anyone has a question or anything that they can help. Yeah, I would love to, to have this as a conversation more than as a monologue. Please. What in Argentina like, made you come here? We're going to make you run from place to place, <laughs> so be ready. You're going to, we're going to get your salary. <laughs> exactly what happened in Argentina that inspired you to instead come over to the States? Okay, so what happened in Argentina that inspired me to come to stay? Nothing, by the way. I, I, I can't tell you. I, my path took me wherever I am. I, I, I cannot tell you that I plan it. Yeah. When I told you that you get to a fork and you just pick whatever branch you like of the fork, yeah, it's true. So in Argentina, I finished my degrees in civil engineering. Um, and, and so I was, I was a civil engineer. And then inside civil engineering, I did hydraulics and structures. And that is a little bit more theoretical. And then from there, I started working in something that is numerical analysis. Um, and then I got the opportunity to, to go to Brown. I applied to four universities to, uh, to, to, to do graduate studies. And, and, and I was lucky that Brown gave me a fellowship to do a master's there. So I went to Brown, I did a master's in, in mechanical engineering. I could have taken a master in applied math, uh, but at, at that point in time, uh, 
Rhode Island is a beautiful place, but too cold for me. Yeah, yeah. So I really say, look, this, this United States sucks. I want to go to a place <laughs> that is not so cold, because for me, the whole United States was cold because Rhode Island was cold. And, and so I said, look, I want to run away from here. Uh, and so instead of getting a master in applied math, I got a master in mechanical engineering because I said, well, if I go back home, mechanical engineer, I can't get a job I'm fixing cars. I don't know what doing what. And so, uh, so but after that, I, uh, I got into a PhD program at Caltech. And that's California. The weather is not cold, so suddenly start loving the idea of, of not cold weather. <laughs> uh, and, and so from there, I start work, got a PhD in, in aeronautical engineer. I think the technical degree is, is PhD in, in applied sciences, but it's aeronautical engineering department. And, um, and, and, but after a while of doing that, I, I said, ah, look, I was going from theoretical thing to more theoretical and more esoteric and more esoteric. My PhD is a fatigue crack in FCC metals. Means nothing to anyone but myself, by the way. <laughs> and, and so, uh, uh, so then I said, Oof, this is interesting, but no one really cares about what I'm doing. Not even my wife cares about this. So <laughs> there was only one time that someone cared because there was a plane crash accident. And, and I basically said, I, I, I know what happened. Uh, but you cannot speak about that with fun because it's a plane crash. It's, 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 it's not good for anyone. So basically, it was kind of a useless life. Uh, and so I said, look, I want to do something different. I want to have some, do something that has more impact in, in people's life in, in a time span that I can see. And so I said, well, OK. Basically, you have two choices there. And maybe there are more, but I was ignorant at the time. And so I said, well, I can do finance or I can do medicine. Well, OK, let's go medicine. I see blood and I faint. So <laughs> medicine is out. So it's very simple. So it's uh, finance. OK, let's do finance. So OK, let's do finance. And so I start looking, OK, let's do finance. And, and I run into David's company, Dimensional. And they have magnificent offices in, in Santa Monica at the time, in front of the ocean, where you see dolphins every day. You say, oh, man, this is the best place in the world. I work there. And I started working there. but I, but. Uh, you see, it's, it's kind of, you, you come to a point, you make a decision, you say, I'm going to grab that. And whenever you decide you are going to go that way, you put your full spirit and effort to go that way until you decide to change and go some other way. So I say, well, I'm going to go there. So I was lucky enough to be able to work with people that are amazing inside the mansion, David and Rex on the business side. Ken and Gene, that are magnificent uh, financial economists. And basically, I got a second PhD for free. They were getting, I was getting paid to do that. So, and you know, it, it was long days and long hours because you had to catch up. I didn't have any financial background. And, but again, you bet on yourself and say, Psst, I'm going to do it, what the heck? And, and you put all the effort and start working hard. And I started trying to learn all the different parts of the business, first investments, then the marketing, then the legal. And I kind of, kind of speak about legal structures and financial issues, no matter what country you are, that we do business, and we do business in many countries. And so um, that's my path. My path is just random path until you get to the point and say, well, I want to do something. And then you look at your opportunities and say, this is the opportunity. I'm going to go hard. I'm going to try. And you just try hard. And you know, that's, that's life. And that's what you're going to be doing when you finish high school. You're going to say, I'm going to university. I'm going to start this career. And you don't know anything about that. And you're going to try hard and hard and hard until you succeed. And you will finish wherever life takes you. But if you don't try hard, you are not going to get anywhere. So try. Any other question? Please. As an individual, have you ever been discouraged, and what has um, motivated you to continue? Oh, if I have been discouraged. OK. Do you remember 2008? The market went down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look, you, have, you always get a little bit of discouragement about tons of things. But you have short-term noise and long-term goals. You focus on your goals and you work toward the goals. The goals, your goals, the goals of the people that you represent, the goals of, the, of your family, the goals of, the, of your company, the goals of everything that is around you, and you believe in that, and you just push hard to that, 
long-term goal. And in the middle, the path is going to be tough. It's not going to be all roses. Say, oh, please come this way. Everything is beautiful. And no, it's going to be discouraging every step. You're going to have something that bothers you, and, and you have to overcome it. You know, and that's life. Everything is the same. You know, my kids are, are getting older, and, and my younger, my oldest kid is challenging me on swimming. I, I used to swim quite a lot when I was younger. And I know that one of these days, he will beat me. For now, I think that I can beat him. I'm not sure yet. Yeah, he, we have a race next weekend. So, <laughs> you know, that will be the first time that I say, well, he beats me one. I will never be able to catch him with him. So it's going to be a permanent discouragement, but at the same time, it's satisfaction. Your path is going to be rough. Take it for sure. It's not going to be easy. You think that it's going to be easy? It's not. Even if you win the lottery, it's going to be horrible and difficult. But you look at the long-term goal, look at your long-term goal, and this is what brings your, your satisfaction. Work hard towards that. Yeah? Please. Where did you start in the convention? We have to make these guys run. <laughs> Where did you start in the company, and how is your path to being the co-CEO? You know the mail room? to the side of that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was research assistant to uh, Ken French and Jim Fama. The, uh, and uh, that gave me a lot of education in finance. Uh, they're not easy guys. They're beautiful guys, but they're not easy guys. But you know, uh, that's why they are world renowned and experts in, in financial markets. And so that allows to learn quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I started in the mail room, basically, to the side. <laughs> you take, again, you take your chances. You have to take your chances. If you don't take chances, you basically are where you are, and you never get away from that. These guys are doing exercise, I love it. Okay, now that you're in a stable place in your life, what is your long-time goal? Or, there is, oh, oh, that's stable? There is no stable okay. place in your life. Well, what is your goal? The, oh, yes, one, six feet under. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what are you striving for right now? Oh, look, I have a lot of responsibilities. Uh, we represent, uh, we, we manage money for a lot of people around the world. And so we are fiduciaries to, to those people. We are trying to do the best we can for them. And uh, because, you know, the lifetime savings are invested with us. So our goal is to help them achieve their financial goals. And that's something that you cannot take lightly. At the same time, you represent 650 employees worldwide that, that, that they have families. So you, the, the extended family of dimensional employees, you're speaking now 2,000 people. You also stand for some ideas, and, and you know we have a financial a philosophy about how to invest and what to represent, and we think that that's very important. So we we try every day to spread the gospel of what we stand for because we think that that's better for uh, people. So every day is a, a new battle, and you fight all of them. You don't shy away from any. Uh, like when you were growing up, did you have any mentors or role models, and or <laughs> when you were here in the states at uh, Caltech at or Brown? Well, my boss is there, so I have to say that he's one of them. But, uh, but <laughs> um, uh, mentors. Um, when I was young, this mentor idea didn't exist, as far as I know, in Argentina at least. Uh, you have a lot of people that uh, you admire. Uh, it's not Maradona, by the way. Uh, but uh, but uh, you have a lot of people that you admire, but the mentoring program didn't exist. Basically, you were on your own. I went to university to give you an idea, University of Buenos Aires, that uh, is probably as big as UT or, or maybe bigger, but, but it's kind of chaos there. Uh, you survive, you float, basically, because uh, it's, it's, you are on your own. They have good courses, good professors, but you're on your own. No one helps you on anything. Yeah. Go and learn. And so, uh, so the mentoring program and holding hands never existed there. And, and that's why I'm telling you the story. Look, it's nice that people will hold your, hold your hands and help you, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. Yeah? Please, you. Let's make him run from one corner to another. You are the next one, so he runs there. <laughs> 
I'm guessing you have a really busy schedule, so I'm wondering how do you manage your time with, let's say, work and your family and all, all that together? I'm still trying to find out that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I have an assistant and she manages my time better than me. You know, I don't mind manage my time. Uh, I kind of workaholic, you know? Uh, and so uh, if, if I go to, to, let's suppose that I go to a place on vacation, I really cannot be there for more than, than one week because I drive myself nuts. And my wife and my kids also, by the way. So um, I have to be doing something. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but I have to be doing something. So yeah, I'm kind of workaholic. So do you have any advice for us on how to manage our time when we are... I'm not the right college? guy, as someone is. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, we, we can, you can ask the guys that work for me. There are a couple of UT fellows here that work for me, and you will say, no, don't ask him. <laughs> Anyone? Is there anything else you hope to achieve in the future that you have not um, done yet? War, peace, and financial <laughs> uh, success for everyone in the world, <laughs> uh, and health. <laughs> uh, look, at the end of the day, what you, ha you are trying to achieve is uh, make a difference and be a good person. And that definition changes from person to, to person, how, how much of an influence you can have in order to make a difference in people's life. You know, each one will be different. You know, Stephen is working in arts. Uh, you know, he may be, do a magnificent piece at some point, and people just look at that, and by looking at that, get satisfaction. My job is trying to get, help people achieve their financial objectives, and that's what I have to do. Uh, and then you want to do that with integrity and your word has to mean something uh, because at the end of the day, you stand by your word and you mean, if you don't have it, that's a problem. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm not here to give advice, by the way. I, I have more errors in my life than you, so I don't know why, why. so be careful. What has been your motivation to, the motivation that has driven you to accomplish all that you have? Uh, maybe it's part of being a workaholic, you know. Uh, whatever is the objective, I have to achieve it. Uh, what, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely critical t to myself. Uh, what is not really good, by the way, it's quite bad. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes you say, bah, I screw up and move over. Uh, just forget about that. Uh, it's difficult for me to forget screw ups. Uh, what helps, because you learn quite a lot from your own mistakes, eh, at the same time, you punish yourself too much. So, you know, eh, I take my job as a duty. You know, I, when, when I, I used, to, used to be in charge of research, and I, and I used to call the research ship team when we were hiring, they say, the few, the proud, the research team. Because <laughs> eh, it was a duty to work there and working hard and trying to help the company and help clients. And for me, my job is a duty, uh, and, and there is no way out. Uh, it is a duty, and, and, and so whatever I define to be my objective is more like a loose objective. It's a, it's a really strong objective, whatever that is. Yeah, that's life. It's good and bad at the same time. A lot of people here think that they have to know exactly what they want to do, and I spoke with somebody once, and they told me, to not worry about it and just to follow your passion and the details will sort themselves out. Do you feel that that applies to you know, how you came from Argentina and you did what you wanted to do and eventually think you got to where you wanted to be? Well, I know that they're going to finish six feet under. I already said that. I don't know where I'm going to be. Uh, look, uh, there, there are a lot of people here, and I think and that's a conversation that you and Dina, you should have with all. You have Joe Long, Teresa, you have Will, uh, you have David, you have Kenny. You speak with everyone. As far as I know, I never plan much. Uh, I don't think that you can plan much. If someone comes with you with a business plan, and say, this is my business plan for the company that I'm going to build, and I'm going to have this amount of revenue and these profits, and these people will show up and hire me and all that, I say, that's crap. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I look at your eyes and say, when everything works bad, and nothing, nothing that you plan works like you plan, what are you going to do about that? And, and, and that speaks about you, not about your plan. And so, yeah, you have to have an idea to do what you like to do. You cannot do any th things that you don't like. That's, no, even if they pay you a lot of money, 
You don't last long doing things that you dislike. You have to do something that you like. Uh, but there are many things that you can like, you know. And so be happy doing what you like and work hard. I, look, you have many people here that, that have extremely successful life. Go and speak with all of them. They're here, and they don't charge today. So go and do it. <laughs> um, how was your overall college experience? And was there something that, I guess, gave you, what gave you the hardest time? Like, was it time management or coming from another? <laughs> Coming from Argentina over here, like the transition? Or? My college, like you call college, was in Argentina. So my college experience and your college experience will not be the same. Um, I, um, I have courses at 6 in the morning. I remember I have calculus, calculus 3, that is some weird stuff, at 6 in the morning on Mondays. <laughs> you cannot imagine how tough is that to be awake with that guy putting a little life for imaginary variables and at, <laughs> at six in the morning eh, on Monday. He just doesn't know what the guy is speaking about, even if you try. But eh, <laughs> So my college experience is very different than the one that you will have. Eh, but I can tell you, it's extremely rewarding. It's, it's, it's challenging. In particular, the first year. The first years of everything that you do is very challenging. The first years of undergrad were challenging. The first years of grad students were challenging. After, after one, one year and a half, it's just routine. You just get to the new routine, and you say, yeah, I just bring it over. That's fine. <laughs> but uh, I remember the, the most difficult thing for me, uh, when I got to Brown, look, I, my English is what it is. You like it or not. I'm not going to change it. Uh, even if I try, I can't, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's easier for you to change your English to my English than for me to change to your English. So it, let's put it that way. And, and when I came to Brown, I remember that they have a beautiful teacher. She was great. She was, uh, but I, the first couple of weeks, I didn't know what she was speaking about. I, I just didn't. I didn't understand a word of what she was saying. Uh, and, but I, when she was writing on the uh, blackboard, it just put in formulas, I knew what she was saying. So I was able to understand the math that she was putting, but I was not able to understand the English that she was saying. So, but at the, now I can tell you and have fun. Like I tell you, I, I, I always tell the story that I, 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 you know, I came to Providence, Rhode Island, and I went to order a sandwich. And this was the last time that I ordered a sandwich for several years because the guy's just jumping on me. What do you want? What kind of bread? And I say, wheat, rye? I don't even know the kinds of bread now after I don't know, 18 years of being in this country. And they go, and what kind of cheese? And 50 different kinds of cheese. And, and he was just saying, blah, 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 blah. I say, And I was always answering, yes, because I didn't know what he was saying. And I went to be embarrassed. And so I stopped ordering sandwiches. I said, ah, that's not for me, even though I like sandwiches. So I can tell you now and, and have fun. Uh, but at the time, it wasn't so much fun, but it, uh, now, I, now I laugh at myself. Yeah, what the heck. <laughs> Go. Uh, how did you discover this company that you now work for? <laughs> I, 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 someone sent me, they are hiring. And I said, oh, let me send a resume. Uh, and I went there and I said, OK, uh, you have a job. I said, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not joking, I'm not joking. <laughs> so when I say, <laughs> when I say that I was working here for 13 years and David says 11 because for the first two years, David didn't know that I was here, but that's <laughs> Chandler knew, you know Chandler? Did you ever have like an experience where you were put out of your comfort zone that you can say has helped you like up to today? Okay, now repeat it in English. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, look, uh, I, ha I have experiences of whatever you want. Uh, I, I was the other day in a conference and I was flying the plane and, and I asked someone for a coffee, and they gave me a Coke. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> you just live with all these things, it's fine. <laughs> Other. No more? Lunch? Oh, D dinner? <laughs> Are you
Are you happy? I am. I am. <laughs> um, I have I have fun. Sometimes I have a lot of headaches, and that's why I have a lot of white hair. But uh, but it's it's fine. If it's that's that's what I, I told Carlos at you, yeah, Carlos. I told Carlos if, if if you don't enjoy what you do, you cannot do it for long. It's just it's impossible. Uh, so you, the most important thing is you have to enjoy what you do, and then once you enjoy it. Eh, try to be the best at what you do. And you will never achieve to be the best. That doesn't matter. You have to always try. Yeah? How about a hand for Ed Bordo? How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Ed Bordo's story is remarkable. And uh, this company is the leading uh, investment firm relative to sort of quantitative analysis and the investment through very financial, very uh, significant financial modeling and very sophisticated transactions. You're sitting in, without a doubt, the, one of the most uh, sophisticated companies in the world here at DFA, and it's been a real tribute to this city and to this state that David moved uh, Dimensional Fund Advisors here. It's been a real blessing. David mentioned education, <clears throat> and I might add that uh, he is a graduate of Kansas and the University of Chicago. And uh, several years ago, he and Suzanne uh, made a gift to the University of Chicago and the school is now known as the Booth School at Chicago, Chicago Booth. And as you know, Chicago is one of the most magnificent business schools in the world, and it's named for David Booth. That so tells you how much he values education and you see through Eduardo what it means to, to go as far as you can in education, but set your goals to whatever you want to do in life. So Eduardo, thank you very much. And David, thank you for hosting us tonight. <laughs> Let me turn all this now to Leticia, who is uh, our leader and has done a great job uh, this year. And we look forward to many, many years of uh, great subiendos, Leticia. Okay, thank you, Kenny. Well, if you won't go too far, <laughs> I'm not going if you'll go right there. On behalf of on behalf of Subiendo, we wanted to say thank you to our generous donors. And if they wouldn't mind joining us on stage, we have a, a token of our appreciation. So, Susie, if you wouldn't mind coming down. Joe and Terry Long, if y'all wouldn't mind coming down to the front stage. Mr. O'Hara, Will, if you wouldn't mind. Eduardo, David. Thank you. If the students on the front come would mind helping me. Chandler, come on down here with Dad. Come here. Let me grab on these. Cups. We gotta have Dad with a partner. Oh. <laughs> Great. Okay. Let me go ahead and start. Go ahead and hand them to them here. And again, thank you so much because without. Without your support, we would not be here today. So thank you from behalf of our students. Shall we open them? Leticia, we should open them. Yes. All right, open them up. Let's see what we got. Mr. Long, are you okay? Okay. If you need any help, I'm happy to. It's a picture of Bill Powers. <laughs> <laughs> is some, some sort of IQ test. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where did Wardo when we need him? <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, isn't that great? Look here. Oh, great. Yeah. Great picture. David will jump everybody. David's the only one can open it. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you so much. We appreciate this greatly. And I know I stand between us and dinner, so. Dinner, uh, dinners. In, in the background, there's a picture of the University of Texas the Tower. Really, the tower's that's, in the background. Yeah, that's, that's to remind you that uh, UT is the place to go. There you that's go. Right. All right, <laughs> dinner served. Tell everybody where it is. <laughs>